day, Ron Lawton. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we are having a look at this uh, very old GW10 from Yamaha. It is a little multi effects unit that has a few quirks. I picked this up second hand for about 100 bucks Australian, which is about you know, 13 bucks everywhere else in the world. So it was an absolute bargain. The uh, most interesting thing about this is that um, it also has some amp sims in it. And for a unit which is as old as this, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty quirky. And I like these old quirky pedals. Now, this works in four banks. So there is the wah bank, the distortion bank, the chorus bank, and the delay bank. And you can only have one effect from each bank going at a time. So as you can see here, the distortion and the compressor are in the same bank, but you can only ever have one going at the same time. And that's what makes this pedal so much fun. So weirdly, the amp sims are built into the chorus block. So if you're having the amp sim going, you can't use the EQ, the wah, the pitch shifter, or the chorus, because again, you can only use one effect. And it's time, and it's these limitations which really make this pedal fun, trying to get some tones out of it, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna skip over to the overdrive, uh, to the distortion block first. Those three buttons over there, you can turn them on and off, but I'll come back to those buttons because there's a cool trick you can do with them later. So I'm just going into the amp and cabinet from uh, Boss. Nice and clean, bit of stereo reverb on there. I think it's on the Fender setting. So I'm gonna go through all the distortions first. You have to use the block button. You can see the LED moving through all the different blocks. You gotta get back down till it's flashing, there it is. Now these knobs let me change uh, the overdrive and distortion. So there's nine different types on here. There is um, overdrive, crunch, and distortion, and then there's a low, medium, and high gain setting for each one, so giving you nine. <laughs> You can hear as I turn the knob, it sort of filters through them all. So the lowest gain. You hear it tick over to the medium gain. Subtle differences into the crunch. Just adjust the driver as well. Medium crunch. Round into the distortions, you can really hear it when you get into the distortions. Around on the highest gain distortion with the drive right up, there is heaps of gain here. But I think some of the overdrives are really nice on here. get some nice drive sounds out of it. Now, using this type button to flick between overdrive and the compressor. Blant, sense, attack, output, which is nice because you can use it as a bit of a boost as well. Chicken pickers out there. Get that really nice compression out of it. Now, onto the next block, you hit the block. That takes you near see chorus. Gotta turn the block on. Goes from full crazy.
Now, what this uh, what this chorus pedal has is here you can actually control the feedback, which is pretty rare. That's more of a sort of uh, flanger sort of thing where you can actually control it, but you can make it incredibly chorusy by feeding it back in on itself, almost to the point of self oscillation, like a flanger. Which is pretty cool. I haven't seen feedback controls on a chorus before. Right, now, the next one is the pitch shifter. This is a little bit weird. You can control the left pitch and the right pitch, and they sort of go from detuned, like a chorus effect. And you've got a fourth down, fifth down, octave down, fourth up, fifth up, octave up. So I'll just crank them right round. Bit of mix control there as well. Can't play chords with it, of course, like the old Boss uh, OC2. Just confuses it. Now I've got two lots of octave down. Some overdrive on as well. Like it's actually on compression. Hang on, I'll flick it back over. This is the problem with the pedal is you only use one effect out of each block at a time. But that's the quirks of these old multi effects units, and this is why I love them. Now, uh, back down onto the chorus block. The next one is the wah. So at the moment, it's an auto wah. like a touch wah, which means the harder you hit it, the more wary it gets. You can pick how sensitive it is. Now you can also, up here in this block, tell it to control the wah. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, but the next effect is the EQ. That's pretty self-explanatory. Bass, metal, treble. Now, the last one is the fun one. Now, there's three different amps in here. I'm gonna put it over onto amp. I'm going to turn the amp and cabinet off. So there is a stack, there is a combo, and then there is a valve amp. So around on this side, it's stack. In the middle, it's combo. Around the end is valve. Uh, where am I? Type, tone, mix. I've got the mix up 100%. Turn the volume up a bit. Hear it tick over there, that little drop. That's the combo. Then this is the valve amp. Stack. Combo. Valve amp. Now I'm just going to zip back up to the overdrive, oh, zip back up to the overdrive block and turn it. All right, so I've just turned the uh, overdrive back on. I'm just gonna zip back down to the amp block. 
up. So now with a little bit of overdrive, this is the stack. <laughs> This is the combo. Then this is the valve. Use the tone to sort of toke some of that spikiness out of it. So it's not, you know, it's not super great. Right, the next one is the, um, the, the last block is the delay. Get down to the delay block now, there is one delay. It's a digital delay and that is it. There is no reverb in this unit whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. Feedback all the way up. It's a digital delay. It's just going to keep repeating there forever and ever. Get short enough to do some comb filtering. Makes a nice slap back too. With the compressor, that'd be pretty cool. And all the way out to, uh, just under a second, I think about a second. So this has also got, if you uh, go up here into the wire section, now you can actually control the minimum volume. I'll chuck it there. So you, you can select the minimum volume. I'll just turn the delay off. You can select your minimum volume as nothing and then use it as a volume pedal. But there's a really cool trick where you can set your minimum volume to sort of where your normal gig volume is. And then use it just as a little boost for your song. Which is really handy, I reckon. Now, underneath the uh, switch here, the toe, there is a very hard clicky switch. And what you can do if you hold down the buttons that you use to turn the different effects blocks on and off, you can actually turn them all on and off at the same time by pushing right down hard. which is super cool. Now, the other thing you can do is if you keep flicking through the effects, you can put it onto this one, which will then make it affect uh, the distortion. So you can bring in how much gain you want, or you can set it to chorus. Gotta make sure the block's on before you do that. 
you can hear it brings the chorus level in. Or the most cool one, which I think, if we turn these off, we can set it to uh, bring the delay volume up. Uh, now the other thing this does, it does have a tuner built into it. Ooh, so if you hold that in, I think, there you go, it flicks over to tuner. Nobody wants to watch a grown man tune their guitar on YouTube. Click it again to get out of it. Now on the front here, there is also an input. Uh, I'll just turn this down a bit. So you can actually see, you can adjust your input volume. There's actually a switch on the front. And it actually has a massive effect on the tone of the entire pedal, all the drivers and amps. And everything, so you really gotta sort of make sure you get that right. Well, anyway, there you go. There is the Yamaha GW10. It is a really quirky little box. It does some really cool things and also has some massive restrictions in the way that it's set up because you can only use a certain amount of effects at once, which is fine, I guess. There is some pretty cool presets in here as well, um, you know, which is pretty cool. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. If you're into vintage, sort of weird, quirky multi-effects like I am, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you find one at your local pawn shop for around 100 bucks like I did, just buy it. It's hours and hours of endless fun. So um, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.